Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that AI is taking over the world. From chat GPT to stable fusion, we're now entering an age of digital co-creation alongside AI. While we are not yet in a place where AI is going to replace all art or those of us who create it, we are living in a time where we can leverage tools to upscale our life and our creations. I'm not talking about prompt designers or generative AI arts, but more so how we can use these AI tools to level up our own works, how we can save time all the while getting Hollywood level-ish, pro level-ish looking footage by using AI tools. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at two tools, Topaz Video AI and Adobe Podcast Beta. But for that, we gotta jump on the rig. Let's go. Okay, we're back on the PC. I just wanna walk you through both platforms and both software packages. But first thing, I'm gonna show you a couple different examples. Just to give you some context, what I did is I took some DVDs, ripped them to my computer at 720p, then I just cut them up a little bit so I can have some experimental clips that I can mess with Topaz AI. Now inside the Topaz AI, I took these 720 copies. I upscaled them to 1080, and then I also upscaled them to 4K. Did two separate movies. One is 12. The other one is my one of my favorite movies, which is A River Runs Through It. Then uh, when we jump into the software package, what we can also do that I didn't mention in this package is you can slow down footage. So now these happen to be in 30 frames per second. Let's say you had 24 frames per second. Obviously it's really hard to slow those down. Well, this software actually interpolates it and will give you the ability to not only change frame rates, but also give you the ability to do a lot of slow-mo. And we will do a couple slowdowns with the 4X at 720, just so you can see how well it does. So with that, let me jump right into showing you some examples and just how powerful uh, this platform is. So first what we'll see is the 720 version of 12. And pay attention to this opening scene. You can just see an overall fuzziness and graininess. Uh, again, we won't play it too long. This is 720p version that I ripped directly from the DVD. Just take notice of the overall scene. Now we're going to flip it over to what I used Topaz AI to do was upscale it. So this is full, full HD. You can see much cleaner, uh, just much brighter. Just overall looks like a better picture. And again, this is upscale to 1080. So take a look at the image. You can see it's much more clear. Really powerful stuff. I'm going to go back to the set of 20 just so you can see it. And I'll close my mouth for a little bit so you can enjoy the graininess of old times. All right, next on deck is a older movie, as I mentioned. This is A River Runs Through It, a classic, especially here in Montana for all of us fly fishermen. This is 1993, so remember their camera technology was not that great in general. However, you can get a look and see how this looks like currently. And then we will actually upscale this one from 720 to 4K. Notice the faces. Faces are a big thing that I think it does pretty well. So there we go. We will go over to a 4K upscaled version now. Now you can see the faces. It's just night and day. Again, it provides that clarity. It's not very noisy. You'll notice a little wobble sometimes, uh, especially in the grass, I guess, when it upscales it. But overall, it does really good. It seems to struggle maybe on some textures, but I'm, I'm shocked. Even clothes, and, and you can see their faces, uh, it does a really good job. I'm going to go back to this really quickly, just again, so you can see the difference of faces. That's, that's the big thing. So there's the faces, and then I go right into 4K. And there's the faces, right? So overall, just a much cleaner look. Now we're going to jump into Topaz. I'll give you a quick tour of the software, explain a little bit about it. I'm not going to go through everything in detail. It's, it's quite robust, especially when you start getting into the AI models. Uh, however, I'll walk you through it and then we'll do a couple of examples just so you can see the power of this platform. All right, now we're inside Topaz. As you can see here, it says browse your computer. Go ahead and select something. I know I have a River 720 cut. Uh, you'll see here we're going to bring up two originals. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make changes so that we can compare them right in the software, which right away is a nice feature. 
Now, if you're in software uh, and you need to import another clip, you can always do that through the file import. On the right hand side, this is where all the magic happens. And mainly you're going to be messing with presets to be quite honest with you. So I know, for example, that I want to take this from 720 to let's go 1080. In the drop down, you'll see your slow motion options. You'll see some stability options. Uh, might be worth a try. I have not tried it. You can convert to 60 frames per second. That's the other thing, as I mentioned, the software will do is it will change frame rates. It will also give you the ability, as we see above that, to do slow motion, even out of like 24 frame per second, 30 frame per second footage, which is absolutely amazing. In this case, we're going to go ahead and hit upscale to 4K. Uh, down below, these are all the things that you don't really need to pay attention right now. Just go to the enhancement, video type progressive, AI model, uh, Proteus, Iris, Nix, Artemis, Gaia, Thea. Now these are all the models and basically the algorithms that uh, the AI is going to use in order to figure out what it wants to do to upscale your image. Now each has its own strength. You'll see here, it gives you some idea. For example, I really like Artemis Dean Noise Sharpen. I think it does a really good job. I will have some further descriptions on what these do and these models, but to be honest with you, I really think Artemis does a great job. So I'm going to hit Artemis. I've been keeping, you know, no noise. I, I don't want any noise and, and recovering detail about 20%. That's what I've been keeping at. And those are the defaults. Now, if you're ready to go for an entire clip, uh, you go ahead and export it here. And once you're done, you can export it through here and save it to your hard drive. But they also give you a really handy feature where we can go ahead and preview what these will look like before we actually export it. Now, word of caution. This entire process that I did for this movie, about two hour movie, took about eight hours to complete. So if you're going from 720, 1080 to 4K, it's gonna be between seven and nine hours to do an entire movie. So it might be good to set up and then maybe go to bed if you're looking to do an entire movie. I think about my own collection, I don't know how I'll, I'll get through it, but I think I'll just pick a couple movies that I'm really interested in doing. So with that, let's go ahead and hit preview. So what it's going to do is build that model. So it's loading in our model and it tells us that we're using the Artemis here. We can go ahead and loop it if we want. And we'll go ahead and loop that by check it, checking it. I already had it checked. This way I can just see it side by side. And I want to show you a couple of different preview models or preview panes that you can look at it through. So it should be finishing up here if it hasn't already. So on the right hand side is the enhancement. On the left hand side is the original. Now right away you can see on the screen there's a lot of softening going on. So this is just the AI. I also like to pay attention to the shirt collars. Let's go ahead and just play it. So you can see here these are the two different ones. The old version and the new version. All right. So that's your default view which is this double sided view. What you can also do is a slider which is really cool as well. So let me pull this back to the beginning and we'll take a look at the slider. So this way you're kind of seeing half and half. This is where I kind of like to compare uh, the shirts and things like that. Uh, so if we freeze it there, you can see, you know, it's just a little bit more crisp. Everything's a little more crisp. So you can kind of do this wiper effect and take a look. And you can see some of that AI on top if you really look close, uh, but it really does a good job, I think, overall. Now feel free to play with the different AI models as you see fit. And that's why this preview button is really cool. So the other view that I like is just this view. And one of the cool things is this is gonna give you the enhanced view, but if I click it once and hold it, it's gonna show the original. So here you can see, again, it is quite good. And you can see it's just overlaying some stuff on top of it. But notice the shirt, just the detail in the tie even. Uh, some of the shadows there and some of the textures, some of the textures inside of the jacket. It does a really, really good job. So that's an example of just going to 1080 uh, and 4K even gets a little bit better. Now, if you want to get rid of this, hit these three dots and just hit remove. Now I also like to go back to this view, shows the enhanced view, the non-enhanced view. So if I wanted to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this little section in here where it's a car driving. All right, here it is. Now move it forward a little bit. Now, let me just play this for you. And you can see it, this is the original. Okay, this is just 720, it's driving by. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make that, which is 30 frames per second, we're gonna make that go slow motion. 
Now, in order to do that, we're going to go up here and drop this down and go to 4x slow motion. So now that we're in 4x slow motion, we can actually grab our starting point and hit preview. And that'll take a minute. Again, we noticed we have it loop. And this takes a little bit longer, but this is kind of where this frame interpolation comes in. This is a good time to, to explain these as well. This has AI models as well. So from what I understand, Apollo is good for non-linear kind of erratic movements. And Apollo and Kronos is good for more linear movement. So in this case, I probably should have used Chrono. It's already going for Apollo. I think it just finished up. We'll try Kronos next to see if we notice any difference. Um, but again, in, in 30K or 24, taking it to slow motion, this frame interpolation is the technical term of what it's doing because remember, it's got to stretch those frames. And the cool thing about it is you're going to see an example of that here shortly. So if I hit play, see here, the, see this on the left? This is without AI, but making it 4x slow motion. So if we did this in our normal timeline in any of our editors, this is what we would see if we slowed it down. On the right-hand side, you'll notice it's going along pretty smoothly. Now it's not perfect, but just think about this from old footage, 720, we're able to go 4x slow motion. So why this excites me is because I might have something at some point, especially when I'm fishing, or trying to do some cinematic things where I catch some wildlife. You know, I may want to do some slowdowns and I've never had that option before. This, especially for like YouTube, maybe not professional production yet, this is really good for that. So I think for socials and for YouTube, you know, slowing down, you know, some footage that you may want to look at or you may want to use rather that you had tucked away that you may want to actually try to slow it down and see what it looks like. And that's again where this preview comes in that I think is just really, really awesome. So now let's go ahead and get rid of that. Hit remove again. And so let's stay on the same method here. And then let's go down to Kronos and see if that's any better. So we'll preview. And we'll just have to wait a few seconds to get that previewed. And that's just interpolating those frames, stretching them out, and then creating frames via AI, which just still blows my mind. Uh, just an incredible use of AI. So now it's ready. So let's take a look at it. So, you know, that one actually looks a little bit more kind of wow, wow, wow. It, I don't think Kratos did a really good job. So again, I would just trash that and harping back to like a broken record that preview is just so powerful so once you're done you just hit export and it will take care of exporting it for you to uh, mp4 in most cases you can change that file format here if you'd like uh, the chronos uh, ai model the one thing i did want to mention is apollo fast and chronos fast from what i understand never use it uh, that's what they say i haven't tried it but I, I don't have any reason to go fast i have time Again, if you're going to use this platform, though, and do anything that's long form factor, definitely allow a lot of time because this takes a lot of time to do. These, I believe, were just, uh, you know, two second clips when we're doing it. But when, you know, I even stretched these out, I think these are like three minute clips. They still took, you know, 10, 15 minutes when I was trying to go from 720 to 4K. So keep that in mind. This next product comes to us from Adobe. It's Adobe Podcast Beta. The best part about it, it's free. Let's check it out. All right, so this is just a website that you can use, Adobe Podcast Beta. Really simple. Choose your files, click this button, upload your MP4 files or your WAV files, hit process, and it will spit out this preview. Well, the great thing about this preview is you'll notice this slider here. The slider is just the amount of AI processing that you want to place on top of your audio track. For me, in most cases, for my microphone, I only get about 83 to 88 to 85 i'll leave it at 83. i notice it also has a toggle here this is so you can hear the original and then you can hear how much strength you have on it you can pull this back or make it stronger or make it uh, weaker depending on your whatever you like so i'm going to turn it off and we can go ahead and give a listen to what that sounds like i pride myself on bringing my audience the truth about many of the products that i review recently we saw the launch of the playstation portal and it's been met with a lot of controversy all right now that you heard that let's go ahead and pass the speech we'll put it at 83 percent and let's go ahead and hear that 
I pride myself on bringing my audience the truth about many of the products that I review. Recently, we saw the launch of the PlayStation Portal. It's been met with a lot of controversy. Some people really hate it, and there's a few that actually say that they like it. Small viewer review about the technical specs. So you can see here, it does a really good job of just adding that depth. You know, I did record this on a Rode microphone, which is a great microphone, but it just gives it that richness and just depth that an, only an audio engineer could really apply. So for me, this is a great tool that's gonna enhance my audio all around. Whether you're a professional in the media field or you're just looking to upscale your footage or maybe remaster some of your audio, then I think these tool sets are for you. I think Topaz Video AI is absolutely mind blowing. However, it can be a bit pricey. It retails for $299. But during Black Friday, if you're watching this around that time, you can usually score deals. And they're having a really good one right now, so I encourage you to check out their website. Adobe Podcast, on the other hand, is free for now. It's in beta. And I think it's equally impressive for upscaling your video audio and adding all those professional things. I don't know what it is. I'm mystified by audio engineering. So to have this piece of AI kit, is really nice for someone like me who doesn't have the time to put in to learn all the ins and outs of audio engineering. Both of these software packages will certainly become a valuable and used tool in my quiver. If you like what you heard, smash that like and please consider subscribing to my channel. As I find other AI tools that I actually use, I'll be sure to report back to you. Until next time, I'm Hill Fan.